What's up guys? You already know I'm Jack. And I'm here with a YouTube exclusive because I'm not gonna lie, I've been like super lazy lately. Haven't really uploaded no videos. Holy shit, there's fucking car wrecks going on out here. Just got off work a little bit ago and my coworker Mercy told me about this signing that's going on right here across the street at a place called Wacko which is like a wacko place. I mean, you could tell by the name. I've never been in there myself, but I just heard that there's like off the wall stuff in there. It's a world famous place, and I guess Michael Jackson even used to go there. Oh my God. There's a guy named Keith Morris who was in a band called Black Flag, and I believe he was also in a band called The Circle Jerks, and there was one more band, which I believe is called Off. I don't really know a single thing about punk music, but he's over here right now doing a signing and I've been wanting to check out Wacko for quite some time. I pass it almost every day. So we're gonna go check it out, maybe learn a couple things about punk music. This guy is an icon, I guess. So let's go learn a little bit about him. Let's just start off with the side of this building. It is literally a piece of art. All kinds of crazy decorations, colors. We got a sick sign right here that looks amazing at night. This whole little street right here looks pretty cool at night. All of Hollywood and everything around is pretty crazy at night. Hey, nice fro, bro. You got the best Thank hair. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, here. I'm, I'm going to read a couple of stories. Some of you have. Um, have already heard me read these stories uh, early on for some of us like one of the clubs one of the big clubs that we would play up in hollywood at one point some of us would get big enough to where we could do two sets on a tuesday night that's what they call turning the room and so instead of playing in front of 500 people you end up playing in front of 800, 900, 1,000 people. And at that time, that was a really great thing to be able to do that. The first big concert I attended was at the Los Angeles Forum in Inglewood. It was my 15th birthday, and the bands on the bill were the Grassroots, who had a couple of AM radio hits, Three Dog Night and Steppenwolf, who had just released The Monster, which tells the story of American history leading up to the Vietnam War. I still hold that album in high regard. Great protest song, great Vietnam protest song. When I was 17 years old, I saw Iggy and the Stooges on the Raw Power Tour, the record that David Bowie produced with James Williamson, and they played at the Whiskey A Go. Yeah. Iggy came out wearing a pair of pants and nothing else, no shirt, no socks, no shoes. The first thing he did was dump a bucket of ice cold water on his head. He was standing barefoot on stage, and all those live wires running everywhere. All he had to do was grab the mic in the wrong way and the, the whole place would have been blown up. He would have been blasted through the roof. Uh, my friends and I loved to see live music but couldn't always afford to go, so I got really good at sneaking into places. <laughs> that was one advantage to being short. Mm -hmm. I was able to sneak into places I didn't belong. One night I snuck into the dressing room at the Starwood when the runaways were doing a photo shoot with Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I was able to sneak past the guy at the door and finagle my way in. <laughs> However, my first brush with rock and roll superstar didn't work out so well. In fact, it ended up pretty abruptly when Kim Fowler one of the most hated men in the music business <laughs> spotted me. Get him out of here, he shouted. Bouncer picked me up off my feet and threw me against the wall. When I slumped to the ground, he grabbed me by the neck, lifted me up back by my belt loop, and tossed me out the door like a piece of garbage. I was a little groggy from my crash landing and all the beer I'd been drinking that day. But when I lifted my head up, there was a, head, uh, there was a hand reaching down to help me up. I grabbed the hand, got to my feet, and found myself standing in front of a man with long blonde hair and platform shoes and dressed in some outrageous glam costume. I recognized him immediately. Arthur Killer King of the oh. New York Dolls. I hate that motherfucking Kim Valley, that motherfucker, he growled. 
Killer King made a big impression on me. When I was a teenager, I had posters of all my favorite musicians up on my bedroom walls. David Bowie, Mark Boland, Edgar Winters, they only come out at night, the first Kiss album, a few other things, Black Sabbath. My dad didn't really know what to make of it. One time he came into my room while I was listening to music, and he looked at all the posters and said, you're a bag, aren't you? <laughs> this was an actual one-sided conversation we had. I think it was hard for him because he liked music too, but jazz was his genre of choice. To him it was this exciting, creative thing, and he just didn't understand the appeal of these strange-looking, gender-bending rock stars. To him they were all a bunch of queers. It wasn't just the way the bands looked. He had a genuine dislike for the music. The harder the music, the more he disliked it. One afternoon, I was listening to Sham 69, and he came into my room and said, I'm going to a jazz festival today, and they won't be playing any of this shit. Okay, Dad, you do your thing, I'll do mine. Here, this is my turf. As I tell everybody that does not live in this neighborhood, don't come in here thinking you can graffiti and toss your garbage out the window of your car as you're driving along. That doesn't work. If the Rosalia rockers don't catch up to you, the, the Commonwealth killers will. <laughs> They had some cool stuff in there. The guy that was reading was definitely cool. Shared some funny stories. I didn't get to stay for as long as I would have stayed, but Dakota gets off work earlier than I thought. You guys take it easy, and I will see you next time.